Do you ever become tired of the world when it hits you that so much of the world that you live in is fake? And I don't mean that we are glitches in the world. And for one, you can prove that by commenting, liking and subscribing, right? Unless you're a bot. Like, are you a bot? Because I will not tell a soul if you are. I promise. Actually, I'd go on a whim and say you're a cute bot. Oh. But back on topic, enough of complimenting you. Look, when we say the world is fake, we often refer to the constructed nature of our perceptions and social systems, right? I mean, let's take language for starters, because that is a tool invented by humans to be able to communicate and make sense of the world around us. Ludwig once said, the limits of my language means the limit of my world. Because what he meant is that our understanding of reality is bounded by the words and concepts shaped by language itself. Maybe, you know, I'm more handsome than any word you have used in your arsenal. Maybe I am uh, tratalactic. And do you know what tratalactic means? It means that you're the most beautiful person in the entire world. Okay, and how do I know? Because I made that word up and attached the very fact that you are the most beautiful person in the world. Therefore, you are tractalatic. You see, words, words are what? They are represented by concepts, but they are not even concepts themselves. The, this uh, distinction is crucial because it highlights the inherent limitation of language in fully capturing the essence of things. You see, we tend to see things in themselves. Philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche argued that words are but symbols for the relations of things to one another and to us, nowhere do they touch upon absolute truth. All right, let's move on to, you know, social norms and their origins. Uh, social norms in a short way to explain it, are just unwritten rules that govern our behavior within a society. And these norms, these guidelines, many people follow religiously, are simply based on cultural values, based on history, based on, you guessed it, power dynamics. And research shows that norms arise from collective conscious of the shared beliefs and values of society. Gosh, I'm stumbling over my words. Now, for example, Tom might have said this, Harry might have said that, and ha Matthew might have said the same thing, and Emily came along, and she said the same thing, so it must be right what they're saying, so let's all subscribe to this person having an absolute rant, because hey, these norms become ingrained in social behavior and are reinforced through socializing. You know what a good example of a social construct is? It's a handshake. We do it almost every day. We put our hands out like it truly shows that we are professional beings, which by the way you might be. But let's say the person you try to show your professionalism to, so you're watching this video right now while you're smiling, while I say something absolutely absurd like, I'm just a girl in the world, right? And it'd be sad because you shook somebody's hand, you held eye contact and now it's ruined because you let your human nature take control. Let me explain what a handshake is, okay? It's a ritual that symbolizes trust, respect and uh, agreement, apparently. Okay, its origins are not so clear, but it's highly likely that it's from an Asian custom where people showed they were unarmed. It was a gesture of peace and goodwill. You know, handshakes were most likely done just to show that neither party was holding a weapon. And just like that, to show we are professional people, to welcome people, we shake hands. Now let's get a bit controversial. Race is a social construct that categorizes people based on physical attribute, attributes, <laughs> such as skin color, hair texture, and, you know, facial features. And the concept of race has been used historically to justify systems of oppression, slavery, and um, discrimination. And race emerged as a social construct during European colonial expansion and the slave trade as Europeans sought to justify their 
dominance over non-European people. I mean, look, inside of us, we consist of the same organs, we both bleed red, we both think, we both cry, lie, uh, uh, laugh, sorry, lie. Well, I mean, we both lie, maybe. And we are much more common than we think, all right? Maybe the way you go through life can be different, but that's like cognitive functioning, right? Maybe the food you eat is different, but who says I cannot eat your food? Who says I cannot sit with somebody of a different color and eat from the same plate? These classes of race are absurd. We are all human, like hello. And what about money? You know, the thing that has the whole world going crazy, like literally crazy. How many blood baths for money? How many lies? How much do we deceive each other for something that simply facilitates economic exchange and serves as a unit of account, a store of value, a medium of exchange. It's not even inherent in the physical material, but it is determined by social and economic factors and throughout history, money was simply a tool to control. You tell me now, doesn't money control your life in some way? It controls your decisions. It makes you decide on almost everything. Where will you live? What car will you drive? Where will you go on holiday? What clothes will you wear? What freaking paint you will paint your house? And what job you will do? And how much slack you will take at that job just to have one so you can pay your bills? You see, that is what money truly is. Power and control. All right, look, let's move on from money. Let's talk about nationality, for example. Tell me, does the board of your country define you? Is the fact that you are located here, here and there in some exact digits make you an American, a Pakistani, a Indian, a Brazilian? All nationality does is define an individual's membership in a particular nation state. And these talks of national identity, oh, I'm proud to be this and that because this and that was shaped by history and culture, language and turf wars. The whole concept of nationality emerged with the rise of nation states in Europe during the Enlightenment periods. It's an ideology that promotes loyalty and allegiance to one's nation and thanks to this ideology it shapes politics and identity. Now let's talk about another construct any construct. Let's talk about uh, beauty, okay? Not about you specifically, but about beauty in general. Beauty is a social construct, again, that defines standards of attractiveness and aesthetic value within a partic particular culture or society. And these standards vary across time and place, influenced by cultural norms, media representations, and social pressures. For example, the ideal of beauty in ancient Greece emphasized symmetry, proportion and fitness while in other place, places due to art they celebrated the shape of bodies and idealized forms, they like curves, you know. In modern society beauty standards are basically shaped by media image, advertising and celebrity culture. There is no fixed notion of beauty. That is why you sometimes see people in miserable relationships because they went for a perceived norm where the person just fit a beauty standard but then they later found out that inner beauty was also something they had to look for and that inner beauty the person they were with was lacking and like oh poor soul. In, in fact one truth that really makes me realize how speech marks fake close speech marks the world is that there was a time where the world rotated perfectly fine without us I mean there were no laws no morals no words to exchange and everything seemed to be well you know yes of course maybe there was a bit of a harsh weather and snow snowstorms and immense heat earthquakes and all the natural disasters that come with the world but it was perfectly fine without us and who's to say that such natural, natural disasters would not occur again with us in it? And does it not occur with us in it right now? I mean, look at the Dubai situation, the flooding, the earthquakes in Asia, the flooding in Pakistan and 
all the natural disasters going on in the world. But what I mean is that these things we do now, like handshakes, bowing, bowing down as the Japanese do when they meet, this moral compass we built within ourselves, these cultural values we hold so dearly, these views we have, and so on and so forth, never existed before. Never existed before. The world rotated without us. Everything was absolutely fine. And then we came along and we created all these norms and concepts, you know. But, oh, well, that's the world you live in. We live in a world that was created by people before us and the creation worries us. It brings joy to us. It brings tears, pain, smiles, shrieks of excitement. And honestly, you beautiful people, the whole chaotic dance of this so-called fake world brings one real thing to the table and that is how it makes us feel and live. <clears throat> I have no idea what you would do with what I have said but I will leave that to you all I can say is that we're all going to die one day and leave with absolutely nothing we'll go empty handed and I honestly am not a clever enough person to go off and figure out what I can do with that information but I do know one thing that we should spend our time here being kind and accepting being loving and peaceful helping the needy and the poor, helping each other. Or maybe, as Forrest Gump would say, I may not be a smart man, but I know what love is. <laughs>